the 100 days that the Tutsi people were butchered and maimed in Rwanda, the media has been documented as having played a key role in enabling the entire Hamwe to execute the murder of about a million people. One such entity was radio television Libra Mill Collins, or RTLM, that used its airwaves to give key details of where people hid while championing for the Hutu-led movement, a matter that went before a regional court in East Africa and led to the incarceration of journalists in that country. Leila Mohamed takes a look at how the media landscape has changed and how art is used to mimic life in a bid to teach and inform the younger generation. The setting of this work of art brings to life real events that took place over a year inside Rwanda and whose players have become the poster individuals on just how far individuals could use media in spreading hate and aiding and abetting the murder of a million people in the span of under a hundred days. You can imagine the people who were your uh, confronted to this daily on a daily basis for months and uh, almost uh, it was about to, to be lasting a year. It was not the only uh, media involved in hate speeches in Rwanda uh, prior to genocide to prepare spirits and uh, souls. Um, written newspapers were also involved. The main players here are Cantano Habimana, Valerie Bamariki and Georges Ruggio a white man from Belgium of Italian descent who moved to Rwanda and found his way into radio production, where together with the rest, they broadcast material that gave hideouts, praised soldiers in the fight against the Tutsis over a period of a year and a half. The question was for us when we started the process um, to understand what made people uh, believe in these um, extremist and in this hate ideology. So, and that's why I've been doing the research uh, on RTLM and on um, to, to see how the hate speech um, infiltrated the population in Rwanda. Lead actor Diogène Ntarindwa tries to become the man that he portrays. His character is that of Kantano Habimana, popularly known as Kantano. Time that I had opportunities to listen of him uh, to him uh, airing. Uh, I was a soldier of uh, the opposing and uh, opposing side, so I didn't know at that time that one day I will be involved in plays performing uh, such a character. The most popular animateur in terms of airtime, Kantano calls for those who have guns to immediately go to the cockroaches or Inyanzi to encircle them and kill them. A few months ago and um, a few years back, I saw kind of a overwhelming surge of these head speeches, especially in the region, whatever the cause is. But for me, there are things that can't be debatable. And uh, I wanted um, not only to, to kind of sensitize uh, the, um, the public opinion, especially in the neighboring uh, region. Much of the show, he shuttles between the main desk, the window in which he communicates with another presenter and the food and drinks table. He dances after announcing that the inter Hamwe fighters have rebuffed a defense of a Tutsi community in Butare in the south. Moments later, he removes his jacket and reveals a pistol holder with a pistol in one of the pouches. The only woman of the bunch sits facing the crowd's back. The actor who plays the role of Valerie Bemeriki, a significant figure in the story of how media was used to mobilize the Hutu community against their brothers, is also here. I think people underestimate just how powerful radio as a means can be, especially on the continent. But Valerie as, a, as an example, I mean, I, I had an opportunity to interview her in 2012. And yes, she did sound remorseful, but some of the things that she was able to do um, it, it just, it's sickening, on, honestly. But I think what for me Valerie represents is these extreme ideologies that exist in society, in every society, that if not addressed, um, and, and especially if they become mainstreamed as being normal, where you can talk about saying certain things about people and people seem, seem to think that it's normal, when you start to other um, various communities and groups and, and, and try and minimize their, their relevance in society. That's a slippery slope. 
the use of music and call-ins from audiences, giving praise for the effort and giving details on potential hideouts of Tutsis. The creators bring out the realities of how the medium of radio was used to massively influence the large number of murders in Rwanda. Many note that had the media not used its platform recklessly then, maybe, and just maybe, the impact would not have been so huge. Meona, jinsi radio editorial ni kuwa inawa inabagua wa nyarwanda na ina watuangani she ili eh, ili wa wawane eh? naona hiyo ni kitu kibaya kwa kwa radio ni hivi radio ina influence sana hivi wa, 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 wanainchi wa kisikiriza uh, taarifa mbaya kwenye radio inaweza ka wafanya wa fanye vitu vibaya as i learned history i learned many things about the influence and the impact of media especially radio ltlm in spreading hate message and influencing the killing of tutsis in 1994 but today what i can say i learned is i got a clear picture of how the mood was in I got to learn the names of people who were involved, the hosts, for example, Cantano. I got to learn the, the, what happened after the, the genocide ended to them. Journalists plying their trade in that country are guided by a code of ethics enforced by a media ethics commission. There is a focus on uh, making sure that the journalism schools are grooming people who actually understand the context of this country and then are going to be able to do journalism in a way that is different in a way that uh, serves because we, we, th th there are even issues around uh, journalists who ended up uh, in a prison uh, some who are tried by the ICTR this uh, court yes yeah, so um, all these cases are before you in class and you get to know uh, which, which kind of media actually this country wants and uh, all these regulatory bodies, uh, the provisionals that are churned out to go and practice, mm -hmm. really understand where they are coming from. Almost three decades after these tragic events, countries in the region have played with similar fires in which the media has been accused of dangling this carrot of division that led them down a perilous path. War announces and it, and it itself. Comes calling, it comes call. calling and there's red flags and you see that building and building. The choice that we have as media personalities, the choice that we have as a society is to recognize when things are just kind of like getting beyond you know, um, the, the scope of, of what we do and what we understand and to reel ourselves back in. This, by the way, does not mean, I'm not calling for self-censorship or I'm, I'm not calling for any of that. What I am calling is for sensible, Objectivity. objective debate. The players in the industry today have been urged to take a back seat and tick a few critical boxes before enabling an environment that can easily light fires that are not easy to put out. If um, if hatred is is a car, then then you know then um, then radio and and media is is like petrol, right? So it it can add that kind of you know that momentum to it. And it's important, again, just to recognize just how important it is to, to be responsible with what you have. Mm -hmm. Valerie is a great example of what can go wrong. Rwanda has stood firm and tall like its people in the last three decades. And according to the Ministry of Peace and Coordination of Unity in the country, the concentration is in, on 94 percent in the Rwandan population, so on 94 percent. Had it been the efforts of the authorities and the good leadership, we do not have developed, we do have fallen again and again into massacres. But the government has set up systems that is drawn from our civil law, for example, Gachacha, and we have rebuilt from that then on. The role of the media is documented and prosecuted in a specialized court. After the genocide, the International Criminal Court for Rwanda, ICTR's action against RTLM, 
began on 23rd October 2000 along with the trial of Hassan Geze, the director and editor of Kangura magazine. In 2003, at the tribunal in Arusha, life sentences were requested for RTLM leaders Ferdinand Nahimana and John Bosco Barayaguiza. They were charged with genocide, incitement to genocide and crimes against humanity before and during the period of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsis. On 14th December 2009, RTLM announcer Valerie Bamariki was convicted by a Gashasha court in Rwanda and sentenced to life imprisonment for her role in inciting genocidal acts. As it picks up its pieces from a deadly encounter 29 years ago, this country has been able to put its place in the East African community and it is hoping that its experiences then will be a learning curve for the rest of the community now as parts of the troubled region could also learn from uniting the people. Leila Mohamed, NTV, Kigali, Rwanda.